How's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the vlog. If you're new to the channel, a big warm welcome. My name is Tristan Mortlock, this is Captain's Vlog. Today we're joined by Chef James. James, welcome to the channel. Good to be here. Thank you so much. We're going to be showing you what we, well, what James does during dinner service for the guests. Currently we're docked here in Saint-Tropez. It is coming up to 8pm and James is going to talk to us about what it's like to be a chef in the soup yacht industry, his experiences, um, his training, and his overall insight and probably some advice for any chefs that want to kind of pursue a career in yachting as well. That's the GoPro that's just fallen down. <laughs> Great start. I like previously mentioned we're currently in Santa Pay, we have to do dinner service and um, so James tell us what you're going to be doing this evening, what you're going to be preparing for the guests and also a lot of questions that I've been getting actually on the YouTube channel is how you provision, how do you get food on board and how do you decide what menus you do, do for the guests, so we should, should we start with that? Yeah, I can do so. Um, so initially, prior, uh, prior to guests arrival, uh, we send out uh, what in the industry we call a preference sheet, uh, which is uh, sent out to our guests beforehand. It'll cover an array of any allergies, uh, uh, specific likes, dislikes, and uh, we ask each guest to fill that out. Of course, the more thorough that is, the easier it makes our job yeah. in being able to do what we can do. Um, a lot of people say, oh, we eat everything, but they don't. They don't um, yeah they tend to get more specific as the week goes on. Right. Um, so fortunately we do get these preference sheets from that we're able to build our menus um, and uh, yeah we do that from what we're given from them yeah. and uh, provisioning wise uh, we're fortunate enough that where we are now we have uh, companies that are able to assist us in this um, so from the menus we'll write up um, as strict, uh, well I say as strict, as close to the quantities as I think will suit the guests and not only the guests but the crew as well and uh, we send these lists out, the company will then bring the food to the boat, uh, we're able to bring it on board. With the storage on board the boat at the moment if we're running with a full boat uh, we're able to stock uh, three to three and a half days worth of food so we'll do one provision prior to the trip and then halfway through we'll find a port or a place where either the chase boat can go in or otherwise where we'll be docked where we can go and collect the next few days worth of food. Um, fortunately running across the um, so close to the coastline we are always able to access stuff that um, the guests would like on short notice and that they decide that day that they would like to enjoy. Um, so yeah, our goal is to please the guests and uh, make their experience on board as enjoyable as possible. Okay, so just for the viewers, when going back to the preference sheet, so obviously the more information you have in that preference sheet, the better it is for you. Of course. And then once you get that preference sheet, you go through it, you understand the kind of foods they do, their likes and their dislikes, and then you create, am I right in thinking, you create in a menu, and then do you send that menu to, to the guests before they come on board? Yeah, that's what we'll okay. generally do. So the more in-depth it is, the faster we can do that. That'll then, I'll draw up a three-day proposed menu um, just to show them the variation that's available on board, the different types of cuisine that match not only the principal guests, but their guests and friends. And uh, we'll send that out to them for approval. Once they've clarified that, we can see whether or not we're on the correct track and adjust accordingly. And uh, once again, it comes down to trying to give the client the best experience yeah. on board the boat. Absolutely. Um, so the more we're able to communicate with them, them with us, uh, the greater the experience can be, not only for ourselves, but for them. Um, yeah. So for those of you who don't know, I'm very proud to say last year, James was actually awarded first prize in the chef competition at the 2018 Miba Boat Show in Barcelona. So Jeff, um, Chef, tell us a little bit about that experience and what what it what do you think it was that led the judges giving you the first prize? Um, well, a tricky answer that, yeah. but, but um, no, do you know what it was? A, it was an absolutely fantastic experience. A great show was put on. Um, we as a boat came in wanting to. We had entered every competition that was on offer. Um, and we came in wanting to set standards for ourselves not only that year but for the years going forward and it was our first year chartering as AWOL so everyone had come in with um, not only high standards for themselves but for each other and really wanting to put the best out there for themselves and the boat and uh, yeah we sat down uh, for the event we did uh, it was a canapé it was a canapé evening or canapé setting um, three savory and two desserts um, and yeah I think what not only it wasn't only the food i actually think it was the entire overall experience we did the meet and greet 
we did the table setting and then we did the food and the one led on to the other and I think with the team effort on board the boat everyone came together so well that from the second the judges stepped on board I think the experience just flowed so easily from one stage to the next that in my opinion the judges just felt comfortable welcomed and I think the environment the mood the setting was absolutely fantastic and as one knows when you go out and dine it's not only about the food it's also the environment and I think that's what yeah. Yeah, entire experience I yeah. think that's what we were able to give them that day which I think led not only to myself taking the prize that day but also to the boat taking the other two categories and um, if I stand to be corrected but we were the first boat in MIBA history to do so. so that is um, right. We're the first yeah. boat to win all three competitions so we're very proud of that yeah. moment. It was, a good, it was a good afternoon out. Yeah, um, yeah it was fantastic. <laughs> very important perfect. thing is with the food you work alongside the cheap stew with the, the drinks and I guess also the, the wine pairing. Correct. So how does this explain to you is how that works, how you interact with the chief stewardess in creating the menus with you know with the wine and finding the supplier. I guess the hardest thing really is finding if we're for example in Croatia is finding yeah. the correct No of course Unfor yeah, provisioning we, wine, food, whatever you need. It all depends and it varies depending on which country you're in. Some some of the countries are more um, more prepared and more suited to what more suited to the yachting industry and the standards that are expected in uh, what we do. Um, so when you start heading around Croatia side it does get a little bit trickier. They are catching up very quickly and the level in the last year in itself from two years ago to last year has improved dramatically. Um, so it's great to see. Um, but yeah, working hand in hand with the Chiefs Jew, the two of us are trying to, once again, all about the experience for the guests. So we'll discuss the menus on board the boats. Uh, Jiv, the Chiefs Jew, she'll come in and look at the menus and she'll know what works with that. The two of us generally try and run with local wines. Yeah. Um, we'd like the clients and they generally tend to as well, they want to experience where they are. Um, so we'll start in France and we'll head through from, well, we travel the entire Mediterranean coast, but it, we'll go from Italy, Croatia, um, France, as far as Spain, and wherever we are, the guests are wanting to experience where they are and the culture that they're experiencing. So we'll use our knowledge to try and pair the wines, be it red, white, or rosé, to the food that we have on board. Yeah. And uh, having worked with Jim for three years, yes. well, this will be the third year now, yeah. um, things seem to go very well. And We're very lucky, you've got a great working relationship. Yeah. You do, you guys, you do hear on a lot of yachts that the Chief Stewardess and the Chef do clash. But we're very fortunate on board that Chef Jane and Chief Stewardess Jib actually work very well together. Yeah. Right, so what's on the menu tonight then, Chef? Um, so yeah, we've just had a uh, last minute request here for some uh, for caviar. Um, we generally run with a traditional setup, but uh, this evening guests have uh, their own preference. As we say, everyone has their own preference and tastes, and uh, this evening is all about making their experience what it is. So we're just running with uh, three components of the traditional setup. Right, which, um, which, which is? Which is the egg white, the yolks, and uh, of course some sour cream. Um, and uh, yeah, generally you'll have some chives and red onions and uh, you'll run on bellinis, but uh, our guests this evening are opting for water crackers instead of bellinis, and uh, they are unfortunately um, unable to eat onions. So both okay. chive and onions are removed from that situation. Okay, so do you find, is it quite difficult to adjust if, if clients have very particular palates how, how difficult is it to adjust your menu? So in this case, the clients can't eat, am I right in saying they can't eat garlic or onion, which is an essential ingredient for a lot of dishes. Yeah. How hard is that to, to adjust to, to that particular um, uh, request? It does prove tricky, um, but fortunately over the last couple years of working on board and working with clients and guests, um, the orders, the requests, the dietary requirements are as frequent and differing as the weekly U magazine. So <laughs> I try and I try and keep up, but um, we can't always. But fortunately, through the training and through what we've done and uh, through the challenges over the last three seasons, um, yeah, I learned to adapt and and make do. Of course, I wouldn't alter the entire menu just for one client. Um, I would like everyone on board to eat how they eat and have the greatest experience once again that they can as an individual. Um, so yeah, once again, proves tricky at times, but we've never had anything that we haven't been able to do. Um, 
and yeah, I mean, you just keep going. I was going to say one of, I mean, it got down to one night having four different types of the same curry going on the burner. Um, so we're just trying to keep everyone happy and yeah. adjust how we can. And just put on a big smile and wave. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Go, just going to go back to the, the competition. When you were awarded first prize, one of the prizes that you won was, I had no idea about it, but it was a very special knife. That is so tell, tell us, tell the viewers about how... Okay, so I'm going to carry on. First of all, the company One plus one carry on. Copy. So um, tell, us, tell us a bit more about what's so special about this knife you're awarded. So for, for the chefs out there, I'm sure you'll know about this knife, but uh, for your average Joe like myself, I had no idea about it until James told me about it. So, um, tell us about it. Yeah, so um, there was uh, the main uh, supplier in Barcelona actually has a personal relationship with the knife maker himself. Right. And uh, the knife maker goes by the name of Fingal Ferguson. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Um, and uh, he started off making knives as a hobby and uh, eventually became one of a, bit, or a better known knife maker within the industry and chef started requesting his stuff. And as I said, it was a hobby that he did for fun, which then eventually turned into a job and uh, his waiting list extended to three years um, three years for a knife three years for a knife so if you log online now and you type in his name and you go to his website he's actually shut his website down and uh, you can no longer request knives to be making um, and uh, yeah as i say the, myself and the two other winners of the competition um, they were all presented with a knife on the day and um, Funnily enough, this is, that's it there, how's it? Um, and yeah, it's an absolutely, thank you, absolutely stunning knife and um, enjoyed using it ever since uh, it got presented. So you've been, so this, this knife is designed to be used? Uh, that is correct. Okay, uh, right, so it's not like something you put on your, in your trophy cabinet. <laughs> I mean, the chefs watching this, are they going to be appalled by the fact you're using it or they're going to be, you're like a brave man? Uh, I would hope not. In my, like, I don't want. Uh, oh, we're gonna have to edit this out because a knife's not a knife. <laughs> I'll get shot for that. Um, no, listen. I guess one could put it in their so-called trophy cabinet if they so desire. Desire, but uh, yeah, in my opinion, a knife has been it has been made to be used and yeah. uh, let it serve its purpose. Um, Fair enough. Respect the knife, and I respect you, and enjoy it together and work together. So what, what would you say, I know I've asked you this question before, but this is for the benefit of the viewers, is in your career on board yachts as a chef, what is the most ridiculous request you've had from a, whether it be an owner or a charter client Ooh. or a guest, what is the one thing that stands out uh, from a food perspective that, do you, that you've had as a request? I mean, I've had many varying things down to clients not wanting, ah, uh, what did I do? I offered them a Thai green curry for dinner the one night and that got rejected because they didn't like Indian food. Um, so that, that was a bit of a, that was, we, yeah, we enjoyed keeping a straight face on that one. But uh, I would say the strangest request I've got so far that stands out um, would be my first breakfast order on board. Okay and that was a hard it was a hard boiled egg yolk with half an avo and seven slices of cucumber um you know what rather have a guest who's black and white than gray but <laughs> never in my life oh, um bizarre bizarre but once again keep them happy they keep us happy and yeah that's what we had to do so talk us through now so you've got here you've got the the egg yolk the whites you've got some creme fraiche some yeah. sour, that sour cream sour, sour, sour cream yeah okay and then um, that just gets mixed with the, the caviar onto... They'll mix that with the caviar, the water biscuits, and um, yeah, eat that straight. As I said, generally you've got chives, red onions as well, and the caviar sits on ice. Yeah. And uh, guests usually drink uh, chilled vodka with it. Chilled um, vodka, yeah. But this evening we're just doing a take on the traditional setup, and uh, yeah, that's where we are now. Fantastic. We'll send this up to Jib, she'll finish it upstairs, and uh, guests will be ready to go. So as mentioned on the previous video for the interior tour, tour, some of you may have seen that video. So the chef has the dumbwaiter here, which I'm going to show you. Don't send up yet, chef. 
So as we come around, um, this is the basic the lift system on board that goes to the pantry. So he puts his food in there, he closes, and then sends it up. Happy days. And then the girls will pick that up, or the stewardesses will pick that up in the in the pantry. Alright. Jiv Jiv, uh, you've got caviar. So what advice would you give for like a chef looking to get into you know the super yacht world? Get as I would say get as much practical experience as you can before you enter the yachting industry. Um, be it actual culinary training, working in a restaurant or working alongside other chefs, uh, the more knowledge you can gain before you get on here, the better. Uh, this is not a normal kitchen, it is not a normal hotel, you don't have, unless you're on much larger boats with walk-in fridges, you don't have the luxury of overstock of absolutely everything. There's fine, fine planning to make sure you have somehow have everything on board in a certain amount for people and that only comes with experience and of course through practice. Um, and at the same time don't forget you can't always just pop to the shops to go and get that little bit extra that you need. Um, so yeah, get the practical training and of course throw yourself in the deep end. So yeah, this evening we, um, we're we just getting here, we're getting going here on um, a Niçois salad, classic Niçois salad, uh, which has been a request from the guests for tonight's dinner. Um, it'll be one of one of the dishes we're doing this evening as uh, not all guests are eating the same. And, um, so yeah, the one of the guests is just having a niswa salad, the other one will be having a uh, beef fillet on uh, baby spinach with some raisins and parmesan, there's going to be a potato puree to go with that and uh, also just some fresh asparagus that we pulled through and then uh, for tonight we're going to be going with a classic, uh, well, originally Australian dessert but we're just putting some fresh uh, spring summer berries here from France, we're going to be doing a little pavlova for them to finish things off this evening. Wow, sounds delicious. dinner service chef Arun. so now what's your standard procedure now is just clean up the galley detail everything and then call it a night right pretty much yeah uh, wash down top to bottom uh, degrease and sanitize and uh, pretty much prep the galley and get it ready for tomorrow morning service perfect thank you so much for your time much appreciated only a pleasure thanks for being with us Right, so I hope you all enjoyed that video. It gives you a better idea of what goes on behind the scenes, especially in the galley. The chef is an essential part of the team because as you can imagine, even for myself or for yourself, when you go on holiday, you base your days around the food, your breakfast and lunch and the dinner. So when you choose the chef, especially on board a super yacht where the standards are very high and expectations of the clients are very high, you've got to be really make sure not only the cooking is amazing and the chef gets on well, with working with the stewardesses and you know with the team on board. Um, so guys, as always, if you do like that video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you haven't done already, please do subscribe. And again, please check out the link in the description and uh, I would really appreciate it if you would vote for Motor Yacht AWOL as uh, Best Charter Yacht 2019. Um, because I think in the last six, seven months when I started this YouTube channel, a lot of you that started from the beginning know the amount of work that's gone into the boat, the amount of time that we've all put in, not only now in the charter season, but in the off season in the winter with the full engineering refit, the paint job, all the work that went into the boat. Uh, I really do think that the team deserve, you know, some recognition and to be, uh, to be you know, presented with this award. So guys, until next time, I look forward to seeing you next video.